Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Lorena Law, a practicing medical doctor with a focus on reversing lifestyle-related chronic diseases and healthy longevity. Today, I want to talk about a condition that has become the most common chronic liver disease in the world, Metabolic Associated Fatty Liver Disease, or MAFLD. It's a truly global issue, affecting up to 1 in 3 adults, with a prevalence ranging from 25% in Western Europe to as high as 44% in Latin America. America. So what is MAFLD? Simply put, it's a buildup of excess fat in your liver that is connected to your overall metabolic health and has serious consequences. For many, MAFLD starts silently, but it can progress to an inflammatory stage called MASH, which stands for Metabolic Associated Steatohepatitis, which can cause permanent liver scarring known as fibrosis and cirrhosis. This damage increases the risk of liver failure and liver cancer, and in fact, MASH is predicted to become the number one reason for liver transplants in the near future. But here is a critical point that is often missed. For most people with MAFLD, the biggest health risk isn't actually from the liver disease itself. The leading cause of death for patients with MAFLD is cardiovascular disease. The same metabolic problems that harm the liver are also harming the heart and blood vessels. Malignancies or other cancers are the second leading cause of death, with liver-related issues coming in the so what are the risk factors? The primary driver is our modern lifestyle, chronic overnutrition, and a lack of physical activity. This leads to the key risk factors we see in clinical practice, obesity, type 2 diabetes, and metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of conditions including high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and abnormal cholesterol levels. However, it's crucial to understand that this isn't just about being overweight. Many women I see going through perimenopause are surprised to learn they have fatty liver despite having a normal body weight. This is a condition we call lean MAFLD. It highlights that metabolic health is more complex than just a number on the scale. You can have a normal BMI but still have risk factors like insulin resistance or that dangerous visceral fat stored deep in your abdomen, especially as estrogen declines in menopause, there is a tendency to gain weight in the midsection. Additionally, we are also learning more about the powerful role of genetics. Certain genetic variations, like in a gene called PNPLA3, can make some people much more susceptible. This is particularly important for individuals of South Asian and Chinese descent. Research shows that due to a tendency to store fat centrally around the organs, people of Asian ethnicity can develop MAFLD and its complications at much lower body mass index or BMI compared to Europeans. In fact, in urban areas of China, the prevalence of MAFLD has doubled in the last decade and up to 20% of Asian patients with the disease are not considered obese by Western definitions. This brings us to some of the biggest challenges with MAFLD. Diagnosis. Because it's often silent, many people don't know they have Habit. The gold standard for a definitive diagnosis is a liver biopsy, but this is invasive, expensive procedure with its own risks, so we can't use it for widespread screening. Instead, as a doctor, I suspect MAFLD in patients who have high risk factors like metabolic syndrome or show a bright liver on an ultrasound. We then use a combination of blood tests, scoring systems, and non-invasive imaging like a liver elastography to estimate the amount of fat and scarring in the liver. It can be challenging to distinguish simple fatty liver from the more dangerous inflammatory mash without a biopsy. But here's the good news. For many people, this condition is reversible and lifestyle remains our most powerful foundational tool. Your liver has an amazing ability to heal itself. The key is to create a negative energy balance by helping your body use up that stored excess energy. International guidelines recommend a weight loss of 7-10% to for people with the inflammatory stage of the disease. And the evidence for this is remarkable. Large studies have shown a clear dose-response relationship. Losing even 5-7% to of your body weight can significantly reduce liver fat and inflammation. For those who have achieved a weight loss of 7-10%, to we see resolution of the disease in over 60% and even progression of liver scarring in half of them. And for those who manage to lose more than 10% of their body weight, the results are even more dramatic, with disease resolution in 90% of patients and improvement in fibrosis in over 80%. This is 
is achieved through a combination of an intensive and structured diet and exercise program. For diet, this means a daily calorie deficit of about 500 to 1000 calories. While no single diet is perfect for everyone, the Mediterranean diet is often recommended because it's rich in healthy fats, vegetables and whole grains, while being low in processed foods and sugars. Now let's talk about exercise, because it has a unique benefit. Studies show that exercise can reduce liver fat independently of weight loss. This means that even if the number on the scale isn't changing, the exercise is still working to make your liver healthier. And the great news is that both aerobic exercise, like 150 minutes of wrist walking a week, and resistance training with weights are effective. The key is consistency, as the benefits do tend to fade if you stop exercising regularly. And what about our lean MAFLD patients? Does lifestyle intervention work for them too? The answer is a resounding yes. A landmark study from Hong Kong looked at this exact question. They found that a structured lifestyle program was highly effective for both non-obese and obese patients. In fact, the non-obese patients had fantastic results. Half of them achieved remission of their fatty liver with just a modest 3-5% to of weight loss, a target that required 7-10% to of weight loss in the obese group. Even more encouraging was the long-term follow-up. Six years after the program ended, the non-obese patients were much more likely to have maintained their weight loss and kept their liver enzymes normal compared to the obese patients who had more significant weight regain. This tells us that for lean individuals with MAFLD, even small, sustained lifestyle changes can have a powerful and lasting impact. Now I know that making changes can be hard. Many of my patients have busy lives, job constraints, or travel frequently, making it difficult to attend regular group sessions. The good news is that doctors are finding new ways to deliver this support. A large study from Italy showed that a structured, web-based lifestyle program can be just as effective as traditional group-based counseling. In this study, patients using the web-based program, which included interactive games, learning tests, and email contact with the center achieved similar weight loss to those in the group sessions over two years. In fact, the web-based group had even better normalization of their liver enzymes. This is important because it shows that with the right structure and motivation, we can use technology to bring these life-changing interventions to more people, no matter where they live or how busy they are. And for those with moderate and advanced disease, medicine is also advancing. Recently, the first ever drug specifically for MASH was approved. This drug, resmeterom, is a thyroid hormone receptor beta-selective agonist, and it helps the liver break down fat and reduces the amount of fat stored in the liver. Additionally, other medications like semaglutide, used to treat type 2 diabetes and obesity, reduces calorie intake, leading to weight loss and improved liver health. These are not a replacement for lifestyle, but they represent a new and hopeful frontier. So, to summarize, methyl D is a common and serious metabolic condition with global impact and consequences that extend to the heart and increases cancer risk. It's influenced by lifestyle and our genetics, and it can be challenging to diagnose, but it does not have to be a life sentence. Lifestyle changes are the foundation to improving your liver health. And now, with tested web-based programs and emerging medical therapies, there is more support available than ever before. If you're concerned about your metabolic health or your risk for fatty liver disease, please have a conversation with your doctor to discuss the right approach for you. And if you want to learn more about other conditions that can be successfully reversed or managed with lifestyle medicine interventions, you can check out the links to my other videos below. If you found this video helpful, please comment, subscribe and share this message to help me empower more people to live healthier lives and to walk the talk with the doc.